Kelly Cup Finals are here. We'll check out the start of the ECHL's ultimate event. Two new coaches are coming to the ECHL next season, and one veteran gets a contract extension. What teams have been playing for, and what fans have been waiting for all season, the Kelly Cup Finals, right now on ECHL Week. Welcome to ECHL Week. The Kelly Cup Finals have been eight months in the making. Finally, after the regular and postseason, as we've seen here on ECHL Week, the Alaska Aces and Cincinnati Cyclones are ready to do battle and wrap up the 2013-14 ECHL season. Among the most successful ECHL franchises on the ice, Alaska is in the finals for a league record fourth time and Cincinnati for its third. To this point, South Carolina is the only team to have won the Kelly Cup three times, but whichever team wins this series will join the Stingrays in that special category. So let's get to it. Here are Mike Benton and Dave Goldman describing a very entertaining game one on KFQD and GCI. He goes to work alongside Elson, and back in the cage, sub collects, entering pass, Vasilini, he scores! Well, you know to speak to in the post-game and the pre-game there, Michael. Right in front, there's Naz, and what else is new? The Aces need a big goal, they need someone to establish the play. Well, hats off for the assist, too. No one taking Maz out. You cannot let 42 or anybody, for that matter, get in front like that. Into the right corner. On the cycle, knocked away by the franchise again. Evan Truck relays Elson at center. Turns on the Jets down the right wing. Elson, a wrist shot, save the door. Rebound out of the reach of Mazzolini. And there's a delay penalty coming up against the Aces. Off the draw, why Sopel, a shot block, recovering, left side, Hazen, in front to Megan, and he scores. Wade Megan from the inside of the right circle. It's a power play goal for Cincinnati with 14.32 to go in the second period. Well executed. Usually it takes a while for a power play to set up, but a good feed right there. And Megan beats Waugh cleanly. No chance for the netminder there, and we're all even at one and one. Counter attack up ahead, Elson, a breakaway, on that shoot, oh. saved by Bador. Turner Elson denied on the Aces' first breakaway of the Kelly Cup Finals to keep it at a 1-1 tie with 12.42 to go as Elson finished off deep into the zone. And the Cowbell crew a bit agitated here with no penalty call. Well, he had a good opportunity, but it was a quick turn, and he didn't have much time to get the, the speed going up the ice. And then Medor right there to make the stop. That off the bench, Almeida shot saved by Watt. Out of his net, and Almeida walks out and shoots and scores. Oh. Barry Almeida on the walk out of the right circle with 12.21 to play in the second period. Pick the corner on Olivier Watt. Waugh there, under siege, out of position, and really never got back into position. And a loose puck taken away by Devin Crow, and back at the center ice it goes. Quick redirection, right side shot. In the circle, swings wide with it, wrap around, score! Logan Shaw, with 8.29 to go in the second period, catches Waugh off the blocker side post. Three unanswered goals for Cincinnati, and they lead it 3-1. to one. Tip your cap to Shaw, a 3-1 opportunity, and the Aces now are stunned. The wake-up call has been sent. Might want to get another look at the replay on that goal by Shaw. Wah was trying to extend himself, it appeared, and it looks like right now this might be Gerald Coleman trying to come off the bench. Yep. Still 3-1 Cincinnati, Toronto lost his edge. Megan goes up the right boards, taking away Sabret. Back at the Aces line, returns it ahead, left side Finley, he's open. Tavares hit, score! It's a 3-2 game. Oh, that was spectacular too. You know, Finley loves that side there. He had another play the other night just like that. In the same spot, he lost the puck and then it was Belzeal getting into Morrison. Morrison hitting it from about that same place, too. Those guys seem very comfortable there, and the net wide open. Wide of the Cyclone net. Finley goes to work now, left corner. Morrison also. 
jumping in. Belzio takes it away in front of Finley. Score! Remember Brett Finley hit the post in Bakersfield, and the very next game, he was a healthy scratch. He came back in, good opportunities in that one, and certainly was a force on Monday night in the clincher, and here he has been a force in period two. For Alex Belzeal. Up the left now for Finley. Jiffer Morrison and across the Cyclone line, but turned over. Puck rolled to center ice by Braze. Aces get it back. Belzeal for Morrison. He's open. Makes a shot. Score! Well, that shot is just becoming lethal. He did it in the second period. Now here in the third, you can't give a guy like that time and space to wind up. For the Aces up 4-3 on Cincinnati. Throw up by Shelba, out the center. Here comes Nelson with an empty net into the zone. He shoots, he scores! No guy you would rather have in a... Can we call it a foot race on the ice? We will a skate race. Nobody's beating Turner Elson. Once he gets out in the open ice, catches up to that puck first, that's it. And Sean Curry bumped along the boards. Four seconds left. Puck still tied up. One second left. And we'll do it. Game over. Chaos reigning into the corner. Concern. The Alaska Aces with four unanswered goals to this evening by Jordan Morrison. And the Aces knock on the Cincinnati Cyclones in a 5-3 victory and lead the Kelly Cup Finals one game to nothing. You know, it was quite a letdown when we gave them the, the three goals there to allow them to go ahead in the second period. But uh, kind of you know, stayed our course and, and, and uh, kind of we were patient. We, we just kept playing our game and, and it paid off. And uh, it was, uh, again, it was an exciting game to be a part of. It was, and I mean, it was excellent, uh, excellent playoff hockey. Um, I'm sure uh, Ben Simon doesn't think so, but I do tonight. We look at game two of the Kelly Cup Finals when ECHL Week continues. Where have hundreds of NHL players gotten their professional starts? The ECHL. And where do you find out about the ECHL? ECHL Week. On television or online, ECHL Week is the only show that brings you everything that's happening league-wide. Every week, watch ECHL Week. If you were any closer to the action, you'd be in the lineup. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Visit us at stoptextstoprex.org. Are you paying too much with your current payroll company? Are you concerned about how Obamacare could affect your business? If you're interested in a better, more cost-effective solution, Einstein HR is the answer. No more stressing out about Obamacare and the new regulations. No more worrying about being in compliance. No more overpriced payroll services. Let Einstein HR get you back to the business of doing business instead of spending needless hours and frustration taking care of details that add nothing to your bottom line. We provide a first-class payroll and HR services with superior customer service. Call Einstein HR today. Game one of the Kelly Cup Finals was chock full of action. Game two is a bit more subdued, but still extremely intense. 
A sellout crowd at Sullivan Arena was in attendance as the Aces attempted to go up 2-0 in the series. Let's hear about this one from Nick Brunker on the Cincinnati Cyclones radio network. He'll swing it over to Fraze, top of the near circle. He guides out towards the point and saucers the puck that gets intercepted. Here goes Connolly down the right wing, shorthanded in towards the net. He is going to draw a penalty. That is a dive from here to there, and they got called for it. It's going to be a penalty shot, and i got to be honest, I can't believe it. Connolly is going to try and put the Aces up by one. His first game back, left circle, he shoots, and he missed the net. It was gloved off of the top of Medor, and it missed. So Connolly is going to be robbed of the chance, and a shorthanded bullet is going to be dodged. Ben Simon has continued his conversation with Freddie LeBlanc, and i got to be honest with you, again, he has reason to be irritated. I wouldn't disagree with the penalty. Aces buzzing around right circle. Mozienko laying it loose for Ring Jarvie. Ring Jarvie, a backhander back to Mealy again. Mealy, guarded by Basaraba, kicked out in front, still free, and they score. They got it out in front on a bounce, and if it goes for Ring Jarvie, it will be his first goal of the postseason. We will see if that's the case. Either way, it is one to nothing, Alaska. The franchise goes to Davies over the blue line, stepping and passing rink wide for Seaback, but he was nicely tangled by Shala. A three on two forming the other way. Over the blue line, Fraze cutting to the slot. Nice move, and the shot on goal scores! What a beautiful setup, and Fraze made some space and made it count. Good job for not only the three on two to develop, but for Fraze to cut to the slot and let loose the, ra the laser beam of a wrister. So the Aces are going to get the puck down deep and on the attack and to try to answer right back. As Byron Fraze's goal, a big one for Cincinnati as they're going to look to get back on the scoring ways and take their first lead of the night. Here's Hazen getting to the left circle. Nice job to the slot. He scores! What a move! Jonathan Hazen undresses the defense and buries another. How about that? I got to tell you, he has made some very nice moves in this playoff year, but that one takes the cake. He got past a sweep check and slams it through and beats Coleman. It is a 2-1 Cincinnati lead. What a swing of momentum. Goal separated by 21 seconds. Here comes Fraze over the blue line, rink wide pass in on net. They score! Joe Basaraba, his first pro playoff goal. We'll see on the replay. As it was on the far side, Fraze, who was on his forehand, was able to saucer. As the puck was redirected on edge, it is going to be turned away off of the stick. Basaraba looked to be with the stick to try and guide it. They're going to wave off the goal. In the wing, it's Trupp. Trupp out of the corner, shooting, but blocked to the middle. A shot on misses. Rebounded, loose by Medor. Still free. Five seconds left. Near side. Cincinnati gets it. Trying to clear. They will. And this one is in the books. Cincinnati has tied the series at one. They hold on by the absolute skin of their teeth and have taken game two by a two-to-one final. Two goals separated by 21 seconds turn out to be the difference. And the Cyclones have forced, at the very least, a game five in Cincinnati. And anytime uh, you can win in their building, it's going to be huge. And, you know, we stuck to our game plan. And, you know, even at times they made a little runs, but we stuck with it. And ultimately we got it done. And they inserted uh, Connolly and Sivak back into their lineup. And having those two back in, that just makes it even more skilled and, and more dynamic and dangerous. So uh, we just can't make mistakes against those guys because they make us they make us pay for them. More news from around the league is next on ECHL Week. in Orlando in January of 2015 when the Solar Bears take on the ECHL All-Stars at the Amway Center presented by Visit Orlando. Visit OrlandoSolarBearsHockey.com for more information. Every day. 
and it's all your state of mind. Cause I've got a smile on my face and I've got four walls around me. If Boomer could talk, he'd say you're watching ECHL Week. Today's question for Joe has to do with playoff officiating. Joe, a couple of years ago, the ECHL started using a two-referee system in the conference finals and the finals. Has there been any thought of extending that, not in the regular season necessarily, because the cost is prohibitive, but what about in the earlier rounds of the playoffs? That really has never been uh, mentioned in the Board of Governors meetings um, to see if they wanted to do that. Uh, if somebody would have to bring it to the board and, and they would have to vote on everything else, uh, I would be open for it. We, we have enough officials that we could do it. Um, but it's, you know, it's not my, you know, I'll say it's not my money to spend. It's the owners, and if they wanted something like that, we could make it work. That's today's question and answer with Joe Ernst, Vice President of Hockey Operations for the ECHF. Five referees and five linesmen have been selected to work the 2014 Kelly Cup Finals. Officials are selected based on the merit of their performance over the course of regular and postseason play. It's the third finals assignment for Ryan Murphy, who also worked the 2011 and 2013 Kelly Cup Finals. J.M. McNulty, Frederick LeBlanc, and Nick LeDuc are each assigned to the Kelly Cup Finals for the second consecutive season, while Pierre Lambert is working his first finals series. As was the case during the conference finals, all games during the Kelly Cup finals will employ a two-referee system. Scott Hillman has signed a multi-year agreement to become the first head coach of the ECHL's newest team, the Indianapolis Fuel. Hillman comes to the Fuel after five seasons as the only coach of the Missouri Mavericks of the Central Hockey League, the team which won the CHL's regular season championship in 2014. Hillman had this to say about his new job. You know, I'm really excited. Uh, I've, I've been able to, to spend uh, almost a week there, I guess, <laughs> over the last couple of weeks and, and just getting out in the community, uh, you know, talking to people a little bit. Uh, there is a lot of excitement. There's a lot of excitement uh, for, for the pro team coming back uh, and being in the ECHL. Um, there, there's excitement with the reconditioning of the Fairgrounds Arena, uh, the Coliseum. Uh, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous building. I think it, people are excited to see that for the first time. Uh, and, and people are really excited also about the, the agreement and the affiliation with the Chicago Blackhawks because uh, Indy is loaded with Blackhawks fans. You had a situation in the Central League where it was very similar, I guess, in terms of you starting or being the first coach and director of hockey operations with Missouri. Uh, is there Are there a lot of lessons learned in that kind of starting up a new team that you'll be able to employ in terms of uh, being in charge of the fuel? It was a big challenge five years ago to, to get that going. And, and uh, you know, so hopefully uh, not only going through that, but, but also all the lessons I've learned as, as a coach over the last five years. That, but I feel, uh, you know, really anxious to get this going, and, and it is a unique challenge starting from scratch, and, and uh, you know, having to field a, an, an entire team here. So, uh, but but we've got time to do it, and, and we're excited, and, and we certainly know, and then believe there's going to be some very strong interest in, in the free agent market to, for players to to want to play in a in a great city like Indianapolis. Derek Lalonde has been named as the head coach of the Toledo Walleye. He comes to the ECHL after three seasons at the helm of the Green Bay Gamblers of the Major Junior United States Hockey League. In his first year with the Gamblers, he led the team to the league title. He also has had assisting coaching positions with Ferris State University and the University of Denver. Malone replaces interim coach Dan Watson, who completed the season after longtime Toledo head coach Nick Matusi resigned in late February. The Reading Royals have extended the contract of head coach and director of hockey operations Larry Corville through the 2016-17 season. Corville will be starting his sixth full season as head coach of the Royals. The winningest coach in team history, this season Corville led the Royals to a 96-point finish and the team's second straight Eastern Conference regular season title, as well as the team's third divisional crown in the last four years. Corville has led the team on the two longest playoff runs in the organization's tenure in the ECHL 
including the 22 games it took to capture the 2013 Kelly Cup Championship. Speaking of the Royals, Reading has announced an affiliation agreement with the NHL's Philadelphia Flyers. The Flyers had no ECHL affiliate last season. Considering that the Flyers' AHL affiliate is moving to Allentown, Pennsylvania for 2014-15, the geography would seem to work very well for all three teams. The cities are within about 60 miles of one another. We get back to the Kelly Cup Finals with a look at Game 3. That's coming up on ECHL Week. 25 years of great moments. More than 500 players graduated to the NHL. Don't miss the next time hockey history is made. Watch all ECHL games on AmericaOneSports.com. Live or on demand. At home or on your mobile device, log in at AmericaOneSports.com to check out your favorite team. The official broadband broadcast of ECHL is AmericaOneSports.com. Alaska and Cincinnati split the first two games of the Kelly Cup Finals. Time for one more confrontation in Anchorage before the teams head east. Back to call game three for us as we pick up the action in the third period of a scoreless game are Mike Benton and Dave Goldman on KFQD and GCI. A battle of the circle. Elson jumping in, body positioning on Lewis. By Sopo though keeps in on a wrist shot block. Rolls down to the back and a bid by McBadden. Save Coleman and he covers. Eight minutes and 38 seconds left in the third period. Now Sean Curry buries a man at the net. That's Budish. Here's a foot race. This PD Hazen slowed up by Richard. Hazen regains now. Top right circle. Hazen sends it across looking for shot and broken up by Nick Mazzolini. 421 to go in the third period. Here comes Sivak in across the line. Slap shot blocker save Medor. And a rebound out of the corner, taken away by McFadden. McConnelly jumping in there. Centering pass in front of shot. Morrison save. Great out. And they won game three by a score of two to nothing. 
on the back of Carol Coleman's 30 save shutout. And I thought first it all started in the second period. I, I thought we, uh, you know, we took it to him. We had some breakaways and we had some chances. And uh, we had a real mature group of guys and, and uh, you know, we kept our heads. So with Alaska holding a 2-1 lead in the Kelly Cup Final Series, we're taking ECHL Week on the road. Next week, we'll be coming to you from Cincinnati and perhaps bringing you news of the 2014 Kelly Cup champions. Until then, keep track of what's going on by following our Twitter and Facebook pages. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, make it a good week. Make it an ECHL week.